Hey yo, what's up? I'm Funke Joseph, a feature contributor at fanbyte.com, and I'm joined by Fanbyte's Apex legend and guides writer himself, Colin McGregor. Hello, Funke. How are you doing? Hey, I'm I'm good. I'm chilling. Watching this Apex exclusive gameplay. Yes. So for those <laughs> that don't know, doing? Uh, I'm doing good. I'm you know I'm 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 surviving uh, guide apocalypse. Uh, you know, it's the fall. Every game's coming out. But uh, True. I got to play the new season of Apex Legends early, so that kind of made up for it. Yeah, absolutely. If you're just joining us today, we got another First Bite preview. You already know what it is. We are diving into the upcoming Apex Legends Season 11, which already seems like an electrifying and lore-filled addition to the Apex world. Yes. If you, if you don't know anything about Apex Legends, it's a squad-based battle royale game that has you scavenging gear and using abilities to claw your way to the top like a caged cat with a gun. Um, it's now coming up to the game's third anniversary, and it feels incredibly different than when I played it at launch. And I guess that's due to new maps, uh, map changes as well, new legends, and just players adapting to its really agile style of play. Um, Colin, right now we're watching footage you captured from a preview event with Respawn Entertainment. And first of all, I just want to say when we get to the, the, the fights, you did not have to stun on them like this. You okay, didn't have all to right. go that hard. There's, They're there's... influencers and journalists. Give them a chance. Okay, but I was against pros, so and I was against people who play this game for a living, so I had to at least look like I had to... I, they're okay. So there's like, these clips are the best ones, but there's like... I don't know, maybe like six hours of me just being murdered like the second I land or like aimlessly wandering only to get rolled by a team of three uh, because I'm not as good as them. Like these are like the best clips out of like a sea of being like put in my place and humbled for like a whole day. Yeah, well, I mean, these are the, all the, are the only clips I've seen and you're stunting here. It's a, it's a no Dang flex it. zone that you've created and I just wanted to shout you out for that. Um... Second, can you give me a rundown of the major changes that players should expect from this new season? Like, what specifically makes this one so special? Sure. So, Season 11, uh, which is also called Season Escape, um, is bringing in a new map, uh, which is 15% uh, bigger than World's Edge, which was the second map introduced into Apex Legends. That map and is it, already ginormous! Yeah, this map is very, very big. It's it's a tropical island-themed map. Uh, very kind of like Jurassic Park. Uh, there's like even like Jurassic Park zones and fences that are monsters are inside that you can like run through. Uh, it also is introducing the Legend Ash, which I believe has been teased since Season 5? Uh, oh, wow, that's either, a while ago. Yeah, I believe it was season five we've been teasing uh, Ash joining. She originally was the Arenas, which is the 3v3 mode announcer, and now she's like a full playable legend. We're also getting the Car SMG, which is from Titanfall 1 and 2, which is also the first weapon to take both heavy and light ammo. So it's a oh, dual whoa. kind of weapon. And um, I think I think it's just it's one of those seasons. It's always a new map seasons always feel really big because we've every season we get map changes. But it's very rare we get new maps in Apex Legends. So it's been about, let's see, Horizon was season 7? 7 or 8, I want to say 7. Mm -hmm. So it's been it's been four seasons, uh, about a year, year and a half, about a year and a half since we've had a new map. Oh, wow. And, uh, it's, it's very exciting. It's a very unique map in its design, and Ash is really fun to play. Uh, not entirely my specific style, but a very aggressive legend for people who like to kind of just get into fights and start picking people off. Yeah, let's dive into Ash a little bit. I feel like every video game has a character named Ash now. Yes. Um, <laughs> it's mandatory. It's required uh, by law that every shooter game has one person named Ash. They have to. They absolutely have to. Um, can you tell me a bit about Ash and her relationship with the lore and, I guess, Titanfall as well? Sure. So Ash showed up in Titanfall 2 as an eight, one of Blisk, uh, Kuban Blisk's uh, Apex Predators, um, mm. which was a... Like a mercenary group of like the best Titan pilots, she was one of the pilots you fought uh, as the protagonist, um, whose oh, wow. name I'm completely blanking on. And you actually like kill quote unquote her in a fight, and you kind of like crush her in half and like throw her aside. And then we spent like two seasons in Apex Legends putting her back together because Kuban Blisk runs the, or not like runs, but he scouts and like he talent scouts the Apex games. 
So he's he's kind of putting in people that he knows. Like we have Valkyrie, who is an who is the daughter of a pilot we also kill in Titanfall Two. Mm. Ash is like a full playable character from like that you see throughout Titanfall Two. She was like in the dropships and the multiplayer. Uh, so she's got like a very like she's probably got one of the the deepest uh, connections, if not the deepest connection to Titanfall in the game. Mm. How do you feel about them connecting more with Titanfall? Because they've always been upfront about its uh, Apex's connection to the game, but now there's fully just like a person from Titanfall Two in here. I'm mixed. If like, don't get me wrong, I like Ash. I think the voice work is really fun. I think her character is very entertaining to play. But I also like Apex has so many interesting, unique characters, and I don't know if we needed to dive the well this deep for a Titanfall 2 character. Like, I felt like Valkyrie was a really, like, nice homage to Titanfall 2 as, like, the daughter of a character, instead Mm -hmm. of just an outright character they just plucked from the game. But, like, she's also a fan favorite, so I understand. I just, I'm hoping that we get more unique characters like we have been, like, with Seer and Rampart and Fuse, as opposed to just, like... The next, it just turns into Smash Brothers, but the Titanfall universe. Mm. I'm I'm actually surprised that you said that, because everything I've heard from people is like, oh, I love that they're referencing Titanfall 2. But that's cool that, that you really appreciate the designs that are already in the game, like the, the unique ones. I dig that. I think, I think Apex is such a rich interest. Like, the Titanfall universe is really interesting and rich, and I really love that it's the backdrop and that there's so many, like, fun homages and, like, designs for Apex that you can see from Titanfall. But there's, like, at a certain point, like, I know a lot of people just want Titanfall 3, and, like, Mm -hmm. I I completely, like, would love a Titanfall 3, but I feel like Apex also needs to not feel like Titanfall 2.5. It needs to, like, a lot of what makes Apex unique is it's within the Titanfall universe, but it's got enough, like, unique and interesting characters to kind of feel like its own thing. And I, like, I enjoy Ash, don't get me wrong. I think she's a very good character in legend i just i think she's going to be fine i think she'll be well received by the community it's just one of the things that like i think it's i hope it's like a one and done thing where we don't see like the next character is like whoever the fuck we killed from like the last titanfall game or yeah. whatever yeah you like the game forming its own identity and kind of referencing titanfall rather than just directly fu- uh, pulling from it exactly got you can you tell me a bit about ash's abilities because i saw her pull out like a knife or sword so What's going a- on there? Ash has three abilities, like every other legend. She has a passive, a tactical, and an ultimate. Her passive is called Mark for Death. Uh, when you approach a death box, like the box that you leave behind whenever you kill a character or whenever an, an enemy kills a character um, mm-hmm. that has their loot in it, uh, typically all you can do with that box is interact with it is either grab the banner if it's your teammate or loot in it to either like you know grab a weapon or switch your shields around or whatever you need. Yeah. Uh, with Ash... She'll have all death boxes marked on her screen that are recent as a white skull on her mini-map. Approaching one will give her an indicator to use her, uh, her, like, it's like a data knife, I believe, and she'll throw it into the box, and then it'll ping whoever killed that person's location, their entire team, if whoever's left, on the map. What? Now, it's not like, it's not like Seer or Bloodhound, where you'll get, like, a full reveal of their, like, figure, and you'll get, like, full movement of them. It's just like if you would ping them on the map, if, like, you ping okay. them on the HUD. It gives you... It's less, like, instant information that you can really use in a fight, like a Bloodhound scan or a Crypto drone, and more just general knowledge of their, like, maybe where they're going to rotate next, maybe where they are. Like, if you want to, like, catch them off guard or, like, ambush them, or you see, like, a team's really popping off and you kind of want to, like, avoid them at first because you're low level, you don't have enough gear. It's it's more of a way to track enemies and then kind of form a plan around okay, well, we know a team's going in that direction. Do we want to go this direction, or do we want to follow them and try to engage? Because when you mm-hmm. ping a team, the enemy team knows. Oh, they, they they know as well, okay. Yeah, they get alerted that you ping them. So it's not it's not just like a, a, a one-and-done kind of thing. Mm. Um, her tactical is Arc Snare, which is that spinning like shuriken. You throw it out. Uh, it creates like a little bit of an electric AoE. If an enemy walks within that vicinity while you throw it at the enemy... They will be tethered to the ground for, like, two or three seconds, and they can't, like... They can run and eventually snap it, but you're you're, you're, you're pretty much stuck in that area. It'll also do very minor damage to you. Uh, so mm. you can kill with it if, like, they're super low, but you're mainly using it to, to stop mobility legends like Octane or Valkyrie from escaping you. Ah, okay. And what's her ultimate? 
uh, Phase Breach. This is the one that I think is going to get a lot of people killed. <laughs> <laughs> so, a lot of comparisons I've been seeing is uh, Ash is like Wraith. So, Ash and Wraith are like the same kind of cloth. They're both edgy, like, aggressive characters. Mm -hmm. But the difference is... Um, between Wraith's portals and the Phase Breach Ultimate is uh, when Wraith makes a portal, she has to not only manually place the portal's locations, she has to run to them, and then you can take them both ways. So you can go through the portal, and then you can go back through the portal. With Ash, it's an instantaneous portal that you make. So if I'm looking, I think it's about 100 meters, 75 meters around that range. Mm -hmm. It's a straight line. It's always a straight line. You have to have line of sight. Uh, once you cut open the portal with her sword, you'll warp almost instantaneously to that location. Now, your allies can take the portal to the location you warp, but you cannot go back through the portal. So you're committed to wherever you go. Nobody, So nobody can go back? Not even nobody you? Nobody can go back, as... no. Wow, okay. But but it's it's the fact that it's instantaneous, the fact that it does not put you into harm's way, makes it really, really good for... So say you're in like a, a situation where there's a bunch of teams fighting and you're trapped in the building and you need to like, you know, like the, the circle's right behind you, it's closing in, you need to rotate to another building. Mm -hmm. But you know there's another team, there's other teams that are going to shoot you as you try to run, they may down you. Uh, you can use Ash as a way to safely either move to cover or like cut that lo that time in half to like keep your yeah. team alive. That it's sounds also like a huge like initiation and also repositioning tool in a way yeah. that Wraith doesn't. Like Wraith... The team would have to stay in the position. Wraith would walk all the way over there, yes. and then you could teleport. Yeah. So, dang, that is like a jump. It's 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 a really really strong tool that I really hope people don't use as like just a. We dive in. I've underestimated this like three v one. I'm gonna just leave because I'm suddenly not as good as I think I am because I have an instant out. I think it's mm -hmm. a really good team tool. It's also really scary for being aggressive. So if we're in a long distance fight. And my let's say you knock somebody with a sniper rifle, yeah. uh, I can cut open us a portal, and we can be basically on top of them before they even like have a second to really react or get the resurrection or shield up. It's a really Sheesh. aggressive tool that I think with a coordinated team is going to be really scary. But I think it also can really get you killed if you're not paying attention because that is a one-way trip. If you make the wrong call and you warp onto someone like I did it's a over. few times, you're dead. You're dead. <laughs> there's like a second or two delay when you come out of the portal that you're basically helpless. Nice. Now, Colin, let's go to the beach. Beach. Let's go get away. Let's go. This let's new go map looks tropical. Like yes. it looks like this super like sandy, sunny. I'm really digging the look. I also saw some weird ass creatures jumping at the players. What is it like to maneuver around Storm Point? And what are some of the key landmarks before we wrap up? So, Stormpoint is a really interesting map to me. It's very big, um, and they designed it in a way that you won't get, like, a big part of it is you won't get, like, third-partied. And for those that don't know, that means if, like, I'm fighting your team, Funke, mm -hmm. and then, like, Nikki has a team of three, and they roll in with their team, uh, typically Nikki's team, they're going to win because the two of us were typically weak. We've, like, wasted a lot of ammo. We've been yeah, in the middle meds, of the fight. Of yeah. They designed the map so you can be more aggressive and take advantageous 1v1 team fights, uh, which I think is really interesting and something that the game's really needed because third partying is a lot of Apex. So annoying. Problem. Yeah, it's it's just a bad feeling, and nobody really yeah. likes it. Um, there's no jump towers, which I found really interesting. So those are like the big towers that you take the zip up, and then you can fly around. Mm -hmm. Instead, there are cannons that are like Halo gravity cannons, like old school Halo <laughs> 3 cannons. Wow. You step onto the cannon and it just launches your ass from one side to the other. It's a complete vertical shot. You have no real maneuver. You can change up your trajectory a little, but like you're more or less committed in that direction. Um, it's also uh, the landmarks is, have a lot of verticality to them. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of areas where one uh, specifically, I can't remember the exact name of it, but it's like near the center of the map. And it's really interesting because it's a big suspended town. And when you land on it, you think, if I fall off the suspended town, I die. But during a fight, I accidentally slipped off. I'm like, well, I'm dead. And I landed in wow. this thick underbrush, and it's like a big jungle underneath. So you can, like, dive off of the top into the jungle to try to escape uh, while they're above you. Dang. It's a lot. Of, it's a very, it's, like, built on a mountain, too. So mm -hmm. one side is naturally going to be, it's, it's always going to be going kind of up in one direction, which can make for really interesting gameplay moments where you have to kind of, like, 
debate whether you want to fight or you want to kind of like push to secure high ground. It's it's a really fun map that changes the way you kind of like think about how you want to approach fights and the loot never felt too stingy. Uh, even like some of the places that aren't like big points of interest had a good amount of loot. I really just mm -hmm. generally enjoyed uh, Stormpoint as a whole. I didn't get to play it too much with like a full lobby because that was very hard to do with like a limited number of present people. Mm -hmm. My only concern is it might be too big because like what, what my only like thing is like I worry people will hop in, they'll land in one spot. They'll get in a fight, and then we won't just see anyone for, like, 20 minutes. Because <laughs> we'll just be wandering around. I love those peaceful games, though. But I, I hear your concerns. Um, my last question is, hero shooters and battle royales have to constantly be flipping and turning and fine-tuning themselves to capture their audiences. And as Apex Legends is both of the above, it seems to always be reinventing itself in pretty novel ways. Do you think the game is growing in the right direction? Slash, what do you think they should be focusing on in future development? I think it's a mix of both. So I mm -hmm. think the way they've been rolling out, like, playable content, like characters and seasons, and I think seasons are the right amount of length. I think they're making good improvements to ranked uh, this season as well, which um, they're going to be basically, like, making it a little bit less oppressive that you don't need to be number one to get, like, an actual amount. Like, you're killing people will actually matter. Mm -hmm. Um I think they do a lot of that really well. Respawn is a very good developer at listening to the community and then quickly responding. Nice. But the monetization of a lot of things is also a little bit frustrating. I understand that Apex Legends is a free game, but there there are some events in this game that are like obscenely expensive if you want cosmetics Let's in the game. Let's go! Oh yeah, this is the, this is like one of like two wins I got. I'm very I'm very I was very excited that I didn't felt like completely carried in it. <laughs> but I think I think Apex has a bit of a monetization problem. I'm interested to also see how they handle kind of hackers going into season 13 mm -hmm. uh, of season 11 because uh, that's been another issue. Mainly not at like lower ranks or public matches, but at high ranks it's been a big issue. But they've been respawn's been pretty aware of it, and I'm I'm interested to see. But overall, I think it's going in the right direction, especially when it comes to balancing. They've been generally pretty good at balancing, making everything feel generally pretty fair like there obviously is always like one weapon that does really well or mm. one legend that does like overperforms like in initially but like like i said respawns are normally really quick to like kind of like address those and then like fix those in upcoming patches so i'm i'm, I'm hopeful with the season with the future of apex i think it's going in the right direction i think it's a game that while it takes a lot of skill to really kind of like master it's definitely in probably one of the best spots it's been in especially if you're a newcomer it just can be like you know, a little overwhelming at first because there's like, I don't know, uh, there's like 15 champions or like 13, 14, 15 uh, characters now. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Apex is in a constantly evolving game. It's like one of three BRs that like anyone really like cares about anymore. Yeah. And I think it's carved a really interesting niche out of those, uh, combining like the Overwatch and the, the style of like uh, Call of Duty or PUBG or... Fortnite and the battle royale model. I'm really, I'm really interested to see where it goes uh, going forward, especially with after the preview. Yeah, it came out during a flurry of battle royale when everyone's like battle royale, battle royale, br, 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 and it survived. Like I, I, That's I can't remarkable. believe it's almost three years. It's it's remarkable when you also think about how many VRs came out that like did not make it. Like there was mm -hmm. Ubisoft's Hyperscape. There was there was that one that was like the rate the uh, the fucking like the eighties retro one that uh, oh yeah yeah that was that like nobody like everyone I forgot played about that. everyone for everyone played it for like a day and immediately gave up on it. There was there's been like so many battle royales. It's actually like impressive that Apex Legends has not only stayed but been pretty like exponential in its growth yeah shout out apex thank you colin for joining me today uh apex legends is a free-to-play game on almost every platform and season 11 drops on november 2nd if you enjoyed watching let us know in the comments and if you like the vid smash that like button tell a friend and check out the site especially check out colin's section at oshit.help to get any guides help you need um it's a real url check it out no, yeah, we, we bought that. We paid American dollars for that URL so you can go visit it. <laughs> Check it, and yeah, you'll never be stuck again. All right, have a good one, gamers. And remember, Fridays we'd be like squad goals. Squad goals.